Welcome back again everyone, my name is Wes. This is The Whole Truth, episode number 7 for the week of 04, November 2013. Uh, it's good to see you guys again. We're going to start out with the robertspaceindustries.com recap. So this week we had a new Galactic Guide installment for the company Klaus & Werner. There's a new weapon lineup. Uh, they highlight laser weapons, mass drivers, and small arms from this premier company. It's an interesting read and checking these out always adds to the lore and the feel of Star Citizen Universe for me. One key note is that they say a few words about the Arclight pistol that was made available in the Weekend Warrior Super Hornet package. The Model 2 Arclight was made famous as Kyle Fenris' sidearm on the hit vid show The Frontier. It's extremely popular on the civilian market. It's become as much a fashion statement as a weapon with serious enthusiasts decrying it for such. It is a high quality laser with what is arguably the best handgun to optiglass link in the business. They're durable and lack moving parts and survive in a number of extreme environments that would freeze or otherwise totally disable many of their peers. Check that out in the link down below. That's an interesting read. There's a lot of lore in there. Uh, next we had a press roundup. People seem to be pretty impressed with the new Hornet commercial considering it's a 100% rendered in-game engine. Uh, there's a few highlight articles on the page as well as Four Player Network's interview of Chris Roberts during CitizenCon, uh, the event they had at the Alamo Draft House a couple of weeks back. I got a link down below for that as well. Go check it out. There's a new fan spotlight post showcasing some backer artwork. Check it out to see a giant space beast, a recruiting poster, a bunch of Lego ships, and a Hornet themed pumpkin. Uh, it's interesting to see Star Citizen backing its own community like this. I think it's a really great idea and they need to keep that up. The ship specs have finally been updated. A lot of the listed ship specs that we've had before have been around since the inception of those ships and were considered projections or ideas of what they wanted the goals of those ships to be. And uh, a reminder from CIG as well, all of these ships are still considered preliminary specs and they could still change. Uh, so just keep that in mind when you're looking at them, but they've sort, of, they've sort of refined them a little more as to what the goals of these ships are. The next great Starship registration is now live. People can actually enter this contest to win. Uh, it's exciting times ahead. I'm really interested to see what people can come up with as far as more ships in the galaxy. We also have a new lore builder, lore builder issue number three, racing events and SATA ball. Uh, maybe saying that wrong, I'm not sure. Uh, you might be wondering to yourself, what is SATA ball? Well, SATA ball is a contact sport consisting of 20 man rosters fielding six at a time per team on an octagon shaped field. It consists of four 15 minute quarters and the teams try to get a ball into the opposing team's goal. One caveat to this is that there are barriers on the field that will stop the ball from passing through them, but not the player. If you want to help out with the lore about the SATA ball and also the racing stuff, get over there and put your input in on the website and uh, be a part of it. We also had a, an engineering update for the Hornet this week. They detailed the creation of the Hornet and development from the beginning up until what we have in our hangars today. You can see pictures of the original Hornet and its, its development process and as well as the privateer outfit. There's a lot of pictures over there and they do a really good job of detailing uh, the entire process, so go check that out. Again this week we hit another crowdfunding goal. The letter from the chairman for $26 million came out while I was editing this, so it got in just under the wire. Um, man, it's been a crazy month. October is now the biggest month for Star Citizen in, in terms of uh, crowdfunding with over $5 million taken in. The new Hornets along with the limited Super Hornet sales really boosted the income. So we unlocked enhanced capital ship systems and a quick recap of what that is, internal bulkhead controls, fire management teams, more consoles to man. Uh, capital ships are going to be an amazing experience. In honor of that goal, we were given a first look by CIG at some in-engine shots of the Idris Corvette's interior that show the hangar bay and the engine room. Uh, I'll throw those up here so you can have a look at those while we're talking, uh, but go to the website and definitely look at them in full HD quality. They're pretty awesome looking. Uh, there's also a really amazing announcement for the $28 million stretch goal. Uh, the team at Consolidated Outland has decided to take Robert Space Industries on in 2944 by premiering the Mustang Personal Spacecraft. The new ship is going to be offered for sale alongside the Aurora, so players have a choice between two options to begin the game instead of just one. More ships is always a great thing to me. Uh, there's no pictures of the ships up yet, but uh, I'm sure we'll be seeing something about those soon. Uh, on the forums, I happen to see a response by community manager Ben Lesnick about whether or not there's going to be a sale before the LTI ends on the 26th of November. Uh, he basically said they're not ready to divulge any information about specifics about sales yet, but he can confirm that the Scythe and the Idris M will not be available. Uh, so there's that. So let's move on to the Wingman's Hangar recap. There's not a whole lot of new info on Wingman's Hangar this week uh, besides the forum feedback with the answers. 
Um, so I'm just gonna throw a thing up here for you so you can see what the mouse pads look like. There was a picture of those shown in Wingman Tanger. They're pretty huge and they look kind of nice. So moving on with the uh, forum feedback. This week on forum feedback, we had Eric, Rob, and Ben as usual. First question, is each ship gonna be assigned a base stealth EM signature stat? Rob says, there's three different kinds of signatures, heat, EM, and physical shape. So you can reduce your physical aspect and you can reduce your heat by using non-laser or non-energy weapons, smaller thrusters, or smaller power plants. For EM, you just reduce active systems. Next question, when will Rob update the ship specs page? Uh, technically, it's already been updated, so they answered on the show. I can confirm that Rob has now updated the ship stats page. And uh, Rob has a post on the forums as well, so you can give feedback if you find any discrepancies or anything wrong with this. So go help him out with that. Uh, next question. How much will ancient Rome influence star citizen in his ships, uniforms, and insignia? Ben answered and said, When Chris creates a game, he likes to take a placeholder from history that he can build on but he's not absolutely married to it for everything. It's not gonna be exactly ancient Rome everywhere. It's taking influences and building on it. It's sort of a creative jumping off point. Next question. How will different hard ammo weapons feel in comparison to laser weapons? Rob says, physical ammo is limited. Some are extremely limited. Whereas lasers can fire forever if they don't wear out. Physical ammo can punch through shields better. Lasers are better at armor. Physical ammo generates less heat because it uses less energy, except for mass drivers, which use a lot of energy. Ben asked a question about how much control players have over the ammo limits. Rob said they might be able to add additional magazines for those guns. Uh, they're still working on that system, and uh, they don't really know how it's going to work exactly yet. Next question. Are there any plans to improve the hollow table and usability in regards to the interface? Everybody answered yes. Next question. How will shields work? Will shields be based on a 100% damage absorption until drain, or will they function on a percentage-based damage reduction from the weapon type fired? Uh, they've gone over this many times before, uh, but I'll just repeat what they said in this episode. Rob answered and said, The cry engine gives a lot of capability with penetration of armor and shields. It lets you determine if something punches straight through, or if it's slowed down, does less damage after it goes through, or if it impacts the shield fully and all damage is absorbed. It depends on the type of ammo you're using, how far it will go through, and whether or not it will impact the shield or the armor plating. So they've gone over this before. They've talked about being able to divert energy to different parts of the shield. They've said there's gonna be like different types of shields. Shields that just have one piece, shields that are four sections, shields that are two sections front and rear. Uh, so there's gonna be a lot of diversity there and a lot of the ability to control that in a lot of different ways. Uh, question, could you elaborate a little on LTI for upgrade packages after November the 26th? Ben says, if you have a package, let's say you have a base freelancer, and we release a fancy new freelancer, you buy the upgrade and you'll keep the LTI. Next question. With 100 plus systems at launch, I'd love to see something like a passport that you can get stamped at each system, hopefully linked to the website for bragging rights, etc., or possibly a unique collectible, something simple like a postcard or other decorative memento that you can collect and display in the hangar. Doesn't seem to be much of a question in there, uh, but the question is, are you going to be able to get these things? Rob says, like a fish, and Ben says, absolutely, it's going to happen. We're going to have items you can put in your cockpit or hangar to show where you've been. And they've gone over that a bunch of times. There's going to be collectibles and things to find. I don't know if there's going to specifically be like a passport book where you get stamps for everywhere you've been, but I'm sure there'll be something. Next question. Are you guys planning on expanding the line of freighter ships? Everybody on the show says yes. Next question. When can we expect the next episode of RSI Museum? Uh, ben said it's going to be very, very soon. They kind of elaborated that they've been working on it and they're cutting stuff together right now. Next question. Will we have a night and day cycle where shops close? Rob says, yes, Chris talked about that a lot when we were out in LA. We're talking about having different times of day and time passing on planets so that you get the value of the cryogen's lighting. And that will affect what people are doing and where they're going. That sounds awesome to me. That's gonna make the world seem a lot more alive. Next question. Will there be a place for guild members to hang out? Ben says, yes, there will be a guild hangar. It's gonna be an outgrowth of the organization system that you will be seeing later this year on the website. Did he say later this year? I think so. And maybe that means that before 2013 is over, we're gonna get the organization module on the website to start messing with. I sure hope so, because it'd be nice to start putting our squadrons together. Next question. In the Klaus and Werner comm link, it says that they have a 60 millimeter hard ammo mass driver. Will there be smaller hard ammo calibers for fighters? 
Rob says, yeah, we have lots of different calibers and different classes of cannons. Next question. When a hard ammo weapon exhausts its magazine, will there be an auto in-flight reload ability or does it require returning to a base to reload? Rob says, we'll have to figure that out. The ammo is limited to what you can carry. Eric said, it's still to be designed, but I'm assuming if you buy extra clips, you'll have access to those bullets. Next question. Back during the initial Aurora sale, the brochure had a blueprint that stated you could attach external cargo holds to the undercarriage and roof of the ship. Is this still the case or have things changed? Ben says, it's not so much a case of things changing as it is a case of things not having been right in the first place. And then Eric answered, the answer is it was never supposed to be there in the first place. Next question. In the Aurora commercial, it showed that we were able to swap out the trailers at the bottom of our ships and I was wondering if there were load times. Could we get around the load times by having preloaded trailers waiting for us? I was also wondering if we had different trailer types, for example, climate control, fuel, regular trailers. Ben says the different trailers are coming and then Rob said it's just a matter of how fast we can crank out artwork for different pieces. Next question. Which variants will it be possible to change between by retrofitting? Rob says, everything is subject to change. Hard points are fixed on ships, so however many hard points there are on that ship determines the shape of that ship. So if a ship has a different number of hard points, for instance the 350R which has two thruster hard points instead of one, then you cannot change one ship to the other. Same thing with the Aurora LM which has two extra gun hard points. You can't add an extra seat to a Hornet. Question. Is there a mechanic for smaller ships that allows you to quickly divert systems, shields, weapons, or engines when you're in the middle of dogfighting? Or will we only be able to see that in larger ships? Ben says, yeah, absolutely. And of course, they've been over this many times. Chris is a stickler for detail. This is supposed to be a space sim. I imagine that most people's joysticks are not gonna have enough buttons on them to handle all the things that we'll be capable of doing. Uh, I've got a Thrustmaster Warthog set up with the HOTUS and uh, I'm looking forward to using all of the buttons. It should take some time to master and I think that's the way it should be. All right, that's it for forum feedback. Let's move on to the MVP recap. So Ben Lesnick had a couple of things to go over today on the MVP recap. First off was user Rogi, that's R-O-U-G-E-Y, created a fake lawsuit between Origin and Anvil regarding the Hornet commercial that came out. It spawned a bunch of countersuits and fake news stories and other stuff on the forums. You can go check that out in the link I put down below. Uh, CIG has also created a new set of forum rules that are not in effect yet, but they've been posted for comment. So if you want to go over there and comment on them to get the rules right before they become permanent, uh, go do that. Moving on to the r slash star citizen post of the week. So again, the post of the week is going to go to a content creator. Uh, I, you know, I share similarities with these people and I, I like seeing all this content that's being created. Uh, this week it goes to Strength, that's S-T-R-A-I-N-T on Reddit. Uh, he created an in-engine short film called Defiance. This is a reenactment of the intro to the classic game Independence War Defiance. He said he spent a good couple of weeks working on this project and I understand it does take a really long time to do these things. This is a really interesting look at what people can do now with limited resources. Imagine what's going to happen once we have the full resources to Star Citizen and people start making all of these fan films. I'm curious to see if we end up with stuff that's as good as TV shows coming out of Star Citizen's engine. I guess we'll find out. So do me a favor and head over to youtube.com forward slash S-T-R-A-I-N-T and uh, make sure you hit subscribe on that video, give them some likes, let's support our community content creators. All the links for Strength's uh, Reddit post and his YouTube stuff will be down below uh, if you guys want to go check it out there. And thanks Strength for your contribution and keep it up man, I liked it a lot. I hope that you guys can continue finding value in these. Our plan is to keep doing these all the way up to release and then possibly morph the show into a weekly Star Citizen news show about the current goings on in Star Citizen after release. So if you guys will stick with us, we'll stick with you and we'll keep doing this. Uh, it wraps up another episode of The Whole Truth. Please remember to subscribe so you get future updates from us on releases. And hit the like button to show your support of the content. And I'll see you guys again here next week on The Whole Truth. Goodbye.